Wonder Woman fans of the world, rejoice. Wonder Woman 1984 is finally going to be available for all of us to watch safely from home. Get used to it. Warner Brothers decided to make all of our dreams come true by dropping the film on HBO Max this Christmas. The film looks amazing, but here's to hoping it takes more inspiration from the incredible 70 plus years of comic book glory. Every superhero has their go-to villain. Superman has Lex Luthor. Batman has the Joker. For Wonder Woman, she has the Cheetah. Now, while Luthor and Joker have evolved both in the comics and big screen, Cheetah's evolution hasn't been as huge. Sure, there have been many iterations of the character over the years, but it's hard to argue that her place in pop culture is anywhere near that of Luthor or the Clown Prince of Crime. Enter Kristen Wiig and her take on Cheetah, which may change everything. The most popular take on the character features the cheetah named Barbara Ann Minerva, the same as in the movie. Her and Diana were initially friends until it was revealed that she had a curse by the god Urzkataga that painfully turned her into the human-cheetah hybrid. Cheetah's various battles with Diana turned to obsession and rivalry as Barbara became obsessed with defeating Wonder Woman. Diana, on the other hand, fought reluctantly as she wished to help Barbara regain her humanity. This tension is what makes their relationship so interesting. Hopefully the film will dive into their friendship first before all the claws and punching. One of the most exciting things that the trailers hint at is the Amazon Olympics that Diana competes in. Not only is it cool because it's an awesome bit of world building, but it's cool because she competes in it while she's a freaking child. Sure, it would have been awesome to see Gal Gadot do that, but seeing young Diana do it is going to be an inspiration for little girls everywhere. That's what Wonder Woman is for. There are many similar contests in the comics. Mainly, Diana will have to compete against other Amazons for the right to be Wonder Woman. Not only did she have to do that to first win the tiara and bracelets, but she also had to do it to keep them. Taking a page out of Wakanda from Black Panther, they will likely expand upon the coolest elements from the comics and build something new and memorable beyond our wildest dreams. I imagine that they will design several different high-concept contests inspired by the comics that will put even the boldest real-life Olympians to shame. Never doubt the passion of Patty Jenkins. She's ready to amaze us once again. The Amazons in the original Wonder Woman very nearly stole the show. I mean, they would have if Gal Gadot herself wouldn't have been so awesome. That being said, we really didn't get to know most of them very well. Diana's life growing up as a sort of outsider to her own people was really tough and created a ton of rivalries and jealousy. One of the biggest examples of this came in the form of Artemis, an Amazon from a separate tribe altogether. She ended up competing with Diana for the title of Wonder Woman and in one of the biggest upsets ever, actually won. She was the official Wonder Woman for a while until she gave her life in the role. It would be cool if 1984 introduced the character and presented a way for Diana to put the tiara down and let someone else serve in the role. This would give her the possibility of a life with Steve Trevor, one we all know she won't get. We saw her in Justice League still pretty upset about him, and it didn't seem like the two had several decades together. It's likely, unless Diana gets an option like a new Wonder Woman, that whatever brings Steve back will be undone by the movie's end. Though I would love to be wrong about that. I'm, I'm, I'm probably not. The big reveal that Diana was actually a member of the pantheon of Greek gods was pretty surprising for multiple reasons. For starters, this was complete news to Diana, who had apparently been lied to by everyone her entire life. It was also a departure from the classic comics and a move towards the more modern era. You see, originally Diana was crafted out of clay by her mother, then the gods blessed that clay into a baby girl. In the New 52 version of the character, she was actually fathered by Zeus himself. For many, this was an offensive change to the canon, but it seems to have been accepted now. Mostly, that's because it opened new doors for Diana as a character, now that she had a more direct link to the Greek gods. Also, it does make her seem a little more like a character from that mythos. Zeus has quite a habit for fathering demigods all over the place. Don't believe Disney's Hercules, Zeus was kind of a player. Kind of like Barney Stinson, but with more lightning and a toga instead of a suit. Hopefully 1984 will introduce more Greek mythology into the mix and set up a stronger role for the gods in the sequels to come. Wonder Woman 1984 has been hyping up Cheetah pretty hardcore, but she doesn't seem like the main villain of the film. That honor goes to Maxwell Lord. 
The actor who plays him, Pedro Pascal, seems like just a joy to be around, so it's kind of hard to imagine him playing one of the most unlikable villains in DC Comics. Seriously, he's like Lex Luthor if Lex Luthor was 1,000 times more obnoxious. Luckily, Wonder Woman had a rather final way of dealing with him in the comics. After Lord concocted a plan to control Superman for his own nefarious ends, Wonder Woman decided to cut his evil machinations short by literally snapping the dude's neck. This move shocked her fellow League members, but Wonder Woman's Amazon morality doesn't have much of a problem using lethal force when necessary. Now, most of the DCEU's heroes already use lethal force, so it won't be quite as shocking, but something tells me it will be just as gratifying. From the looks of the lighthearted trailers, though, I'd say that the chances of her going quite as hard as her comics counterpart are still unlikely. Though, they did get Maxwell Lord, and they do know what fans want to see. Hey, uh, hey, Diana, his neck looks a little, uh, a little, a little bit sore. See if you can uh, help him out. Sorry. The first Wonder Woman film mostly focused on the gritty war drama elements of Diana's history. While that is a very important part of her story, it did leave out a lot of the campier elements that the character is known for. We all love to see Diana take on a squadron of soldiers by herself, but this year is deserving of a little silliness, don't you think? Well, absolutely nothing in Wonder Woman history is as beautifully, ridiculously campy as Wonder Woman's famous invisible jet. Hey there, Wonder Woman. Flying your invisible plane, I see. Uh -huh. Why does Wonder Woman, a character who is often depicted with the power of flight, need an invisible jet that still leaves her visible? Who knows? But I think we're gonna find out. In the final Wonder Woman 1984 trailer, there's a part where Steve Trevor boasts about his stealthy flying abilities, only to learn that Sonar now exists. This seems like the perfect setup for the film to introduce an undetectable jet for Steve and Diana to fly around in. Tell me you don't want to see that scene right now. I know I do. Wonder Woman introduced Ares into the DCEU and then just as quickly had Diana obliterate him in an epic display of godly fury. While this was one of the highlights of the film, it did leave a big plot point up in the air. If Ares is destroyed, who will be the new god of war? In the comics, Diana has to face this exact problem and comes up with an epic solution. The Brian Azzarello run on Wonder Woman saw Diana make the ultimate choice to become the god of war herself. We've seen a lot of cool things in 1984, but nothing that points to how the film might end. What ending could possibly make us more stoked for a sequel than making Wonder Woman take up the mantle of her archenemy from the last film? Perhaps the world has descended into chaos without a god of war to bring order to it. Diana may have to confront the fact that war is inevitable and will have to turn into everything she despised in the last film. Knowing Diana, though, she'd still somehow find a way to stand for hope and peace, even while standing as the literal god of the opposite. There have been a ton of great Wonder Woman writers over the years. One of the best writers to ever take on the ultimate female hero was all-star comic writer Gail Simone. Fresh off her Birds of Prey run, Gail Simone tackled the Mascara's history and the complexities of her birth on the island. It was revealed to Diana that there was actually a group of traitorous Amazons who tried to destroy her when she was just a child. Hippolyta then had the immortal Amazonian traitors imprisoned until they were freed by an invasion. 1984 is clearly going to shed some more light on Wonder Woman's past. They could easily throw some references to Simone's run by having Hippolyta reveal that despite how great a hero Diana is, there will always be those who hate her. Of course, Diana considers this sort of thing a challenge, usually rising to every occasion to bring compassion and hope even to the worst of humanity. That was the core of Simone's take on the character and hopefully something the new film brings in as well. The 1980s saw a ton of DC characters get a revamp after Crisis on Infinite Earths. Batman and Superman both got epic new origin stories from legendary comic book creators, so it was inevitable that Wonder Woman would get the same treatment. George Perez of the New Teen Titans refocused Wonder Woman around her Greek mythological origins. The coolest story during this era was called the Challenge of the Gods. In this arc, long before Diana's parentage was rebooted, Zeus offers to get together with Diana, prompting her to actually refuse the god. She then has to go on an epic journey to prove herself worthy to the gods themselves as a hero of myth, not just of man. 
Seeing as the first Wonder Woman took a lot of inspiration from Perez's take on the character, it would be fitting to show Wonder Woman go through several trials, proving herself to be worthy of the immense power that she has. The story also shows the good works that she does for mankind. 1984 will have to contend with what she's been up to for the past few decades. Hopefully, we will get to see exactly how Diana has shaped the world, even if she had to do it from the shadows. There have been a lot of great Wonder Woman stories over the years, but unfortunately, there have been a ton of horrible ones as well. Perhaps the most infamous storyline in her entire history was the brief period where she was less a hero from Greek myth so much as she was a super spy with funky clothes and a whole new attitude. The arc was notoriously so terrible that famous feminist Gloria Steinem had to pressure DC to bring her back to her glory days. Hopefully, the new film gives us a few nods to this by showing some of Wonder Woman's silly, psychedelic clothing from this painful era of her history. The movie is going to showcase everything amazing about Wonder Woman, so I think it can poke fun at itself, too. And there you have it, Wonder Woman fans. Our wait is almost over. Soon we'll find out just how many of these elements make it into the film. Are there any comic moments you want 1984 to have? Let us know in the comments, and hey, like and subscribe for more Screen Rant.